Hello. Today we're going to take a look at integration with the inverse trig. Now we did the derivative rules yesterday, so today we're going to do the uh, opposite, which of course is the integration. Now these are pretty simple. You just got to recognize the pattern. For example, for the first one right here, we have the derivative du and du over the square root of a squared minus u squared. You might recognize this pattern as arc sine, and that's exactly what this is. When we take the antiderivative, now I'm just going to give you the rule. If you want to learn how to find these, uh, you can find them on YouTube or something like that. They have a lot of those type of examples somewhere. So this becomes the arc sine of u over a plus c1. That's just our rule. Now, yesterday a was always just 1, but today a is going to be a little bit different. Down below here, this is the most recognizable one. This is going to be our arc tangent, 1 over a squared plus u squared. And it's antiderivative rule. We get 1 over a arc tangent of u over a plus c1. And the last one, this is our arc secant. So kind of like arc tangent, we're going to get 1 over a times the arc secant of u over a plus c1. And this is going to be absolute value because like yesterday, u has to be positive in this situation. That's our radius right there. So, all right. Now, if you notice, we're not going to be worried about arc uh, cosine. Because remember, if I like did arc cosine, it would look like this. Negative du, uh, the square root of a squared minus u squared. This would be arc cosine of arc cosine of u over a plus c1. Now we don't have to worry about arc cosine because, well, I can use arc sine by just taking out the negative and I would get negative arc sine of u over a plus c1. So we'll never see like the co in a lot of these unless you want to deal with them. So let's take a look at some examples here. And uh, this is not too bad to do at the beginning. They do get a little bit more complicated. And we're going to take a part Two, we're going to take a look at some way, really, way hard ones. So follow along if we can. So we can take the antiderivative of dx over 4 minus x squared. Now the first thing I always want to do is I want to check for u substitution. I want to see if u sub works. And that's if I let my u here equal the bottom, 4 minus x squared, we get du equals negative 2x dx. It's this 2x that interests me because I want to see, does it cancel with anything? Like if I had an x on the outside here, I could cancel. But unfortunately, nothing cancels, so this fails. U, u sub fails. So what we have to do, we only know one other technique right now, and that's one of our arc functions. This looks like it might be arc sine. So if I'm looking at arc sine, I need two things. I need u and a. And I get that from these little parts right here. My rule says that this is a squared and this is the x squared is u squared. So I know a squared is 4, u squared is x squared, a is 2, u is x. That's how I used to break up with people. u is x. Ba -boom -tsh. Thank you. Now, taking the derivative, now I want to take the derivative because this is technically a u substitution. So we do want to replace anything with an x with u, even this dx. So this is du equals dx. It means nothing for us right now. We'll talk more about this later. Okay, what, why this is more important for us later on. But right now, all I need to know is the little formula. The ant so we're going to get du over the, uh, the square root of a squared minus u squared. And we know the rule here from above is arc sine of u over a plus c1. Now this will be the only time we write it out completely like this. And if I replace my u and a, arc sine, a, u is x, a was 2, we get plus c1. And there's our antiderivative. And we can take a look at another one here real quickly. Just to kind of show you how quickly these really kind of go. Let's try this one the antiderivative of dx over 4 minus 25x squared. Now again, I know u substitution is not going to work because if I take the derivative of the antiderivative, I get 25x. The x isn't going to cancel. So this is again, it's my arc sine function. 
and it's u over a plus c1. I like to write it out. The more I write it out, the more I remember it. So I know a squared is 4, u squared is 25x squared. a again is 2, but u is <coughs> 5x. Now this becomes a problem for us because when I replace my dx, I'm going to get, remember I get du equals 5dx, so dx equals du over 5. It's this over 5 we want because if I were to replace this now, we would get 1 fifth du over the square root of a squared minus u squared. And it's this 1 fifth from right here. So it's going to be our arc sine, but we're going to have a 1 fifth on the outside. So our answer is going to be 1 fifth the arc sine of a, which, I'm uh, sorry, of u, which we said is 5x over a, which is 2 plus c1. So let's take a look at another example like this one. I'm going to show you that we don't have to do all this. We can go straight to our answer from here. So let's take a look at a third example real quickly. Number, th uh, number three here. And let's see. We'll do the antiderivative of dx over. Let's try it this way this time. Um, let's do 25 minus 3, or sorry, plus 3x squared. Now this is no longer our arc <coughs> excuse me, this is no longer arc cosine, but this is now our arc tangent. So let's write down the rule for arc tangent. It's u over a plus c1. Don't forget it's also 1 over a. So again, I need u and a. Well, here's a again. a squared is 25. u squared is 3x squared. a is 5. u is the square root of 3 times x. And that's okay. Taking the derivative, du equals the square root of 3 dx. So I get dx equals du over root 3. I need this over root 3 because what that means is when I write up my final answer, I'm going to get 1 over the square root of 3 times my arc tangent, which is 1 over a, 1 over 5, times the arc tangent of u over a, so uh, x root 3 over 5 plus c1. And there's your answer. And you can distribute the 1 over root 3 if you like as well. Easy peasy. All right, so if you want, go into part two, and we're going to take a look at, well, what happens if we have to do completing the square? And even then, some more harder ones, okay? So, but before we do that, if you want to, let's kind of review how to complete the square. we got a few minutes. So to complete the square, like let's say I have x squared minus 10x plus 7. I want to complete the square. Well, the rule says I... Just look at the parts with the x's. x squared minus 10x plus some blank. I have the 7 on the outside. So what I'm doing is going to make half of the negative 10, which is negative 5, and squared, I get 25. But the problem is I'm changing the 25. So if I change here, if I'm adding 25 in here, I have to undo it. I have to balance it. So I have to subtract 25 from the 7. So, and that's, to, and that's in order to balance our equation. And we would get x minus 5 squared minus 16. So, if you go on to part 2, we're going to see how it is we apply these. So, I'll see you guys there.